Welcome South Knoxville Church of God, welcome guests. Great to have you with us tonight. Let me take this opportunity to thank you for stopping in. I, I ask you if you can, stay tuned. Don't, don't jump out of here too soon because I know that's just a habit of what people do on social media, but uh, there's a good word coming forth and it's gonna bless you. Um, for the last few weeks, we have been talking about current events in the church. There's a lot going on in the world right now and a lot of it is related to end time prophecy. Before that, and you can back up and watch that by the way, uh, before that we talked about wielding the sword of the spirit. That was a 12 week study and it was basically aimed at uh, spiritual warfare. This is, this is a real topic right now that the church needs to, uh, needs to hear from God on because this is war. Our war is not with groups of people. Our war is with our enemy, the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, and that is where our battle is. Now, as we're going into the Word tonight, Sister Rose Burkhart will be bringing that forth. She's a minister of the church. Uh, last week, you, you got to watch Brother Gary, and he brought forth a, a great word also. She's gonna do the same thing tonight, and you will be blessed by it. She's gonna be talking about occupying until Jesus comes. Please stay tuned. I know you'll be blessed by this message. God bless you. Hello, South Knoxville Church of God and all others watching today. I'm Rose Burkhart, and uh, I would like to thank our pastor uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak today. Before we do anything else, though, I would like to pray. So if you will pray with me, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Lord, I just thank you and I praise you, Lord, that you are the Almighty God. I know in myself there is nothing Lord, you've given me a word. Help me, Lord Jesus, to bring it so that others may hear and they may receive it. And Lord, I ask you to speak to hearts today. Minister, bless, and Lord, all glory and honor is yours. And I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. As I say, my name's Rose, and uh, there's nothing in me that's special. The only thing special about me is I am a child of God, and He is the one that uses us as we yield to Him. And when the pastor asked me to uh, speak, I started praying about, Lord, what would you have me speak? I've spoken on different things than I have those in the library, but what would you have me to speak? And that week I was really busy doing some things, but at the end of the week, I had been praying that night even, and early in the morning I got woke up, and. It was like God was saying, occupy, occupy till I come. And I felt like I needed to get up because I felt like this is what he's wanting me to speak on. So I got up between one and two o'clock in the morning. Uh, everybody else was asleep, so I didn't want to wake anybody up. So I got up and went into another room and I took my notebook, my little word, I call it my word journal. And I took it with me and I wrote that down, occupy till I come. And I also wrote down some things I was feeling at, uh, as when I wrote that down. Lord, we haven't been occupying. I felt like we haven't uh, been holding the ground that we're supposed to hold. We've been relenting. We've been keeping our mouth shut too much. And then I thought, we haven't been watching our posts like we should be. After uh, praying and writing that down, I went back to bed and went to sleep. And then uh, the next Sunday, I felt like I got a kind of confirmation because Pastor Laura Melk, before he started speaking, he said, we need to occupy, and he saw, talked about occupying being a military term. And then when he said that, I thought, yes, that's right. Amen. In fact, I probably said it because some of you have probably heard me on some of his videos, not intentionally on my part, say, me saying amen and other things. So it was one of those things. and. Um, I thought, this is a confirmation to what you're wanting me to talk, speak on. When I was uh, going back to that morning, I was thinking, I knew Occupy came from the Word, but I'd be honest, I did not, could not tell you the address or the, where it was located. So I had to look it up, and I looked it up in, using the Blue Letter Bible. And if you remember, if you've watched any of the Wednesday nights, Pastor mentioned that as one of the tools he used. And it's one I've used also, and I love it because you can do so much with it. But that was, he's already covered that, so I will not cover that. But I found it in the scripture. It was Luke uh, chapter 19. 
is where it's located. And it said, Occupy till I come. Now that's in the King James Version. Uh, I'll go over some other things about that in a moment. Now, before I go any farther, I'm a big believer in reading scripture in context. So that's the only time in the King James Version that Occupy is used. It's used in the NASB and related to other scriptures, but the word Occupy. But it's the only place it's used in the King James Version. And one of the things I noticed was, I wanted to read before that. Start in verse 12. We're going to start reading a moment, verse 11. But I thought, what was before that in the scripture, before he gave this parable? Because understanding the scripture, it helps. In the beginning of that chapter, in chapter 19, it was uh, about Zacchaeus and the sycamore tree. That's a story we've, if you had been in church and children, you heard that story of how Zacchaeus went up, he was a short man, went up to the sycamore tree because he wanted to see the Lord. For the Lord he wanted to see, there's a little song that says. And that Jesus called him down and said, you've got, I'm going to come to your house today. And the instance on this, I, I'm not going to speak on that, but the Lord went to see him and made a point. Now others were criticizing, you're going to a sinner. But what did he do? When the Lord went to see him, he turned and he went back into what he needed to be. He changed and he turned toward the Lord. It says, and when Jesus came to, to the place, he looked up and saw him. And then later on it says um, that he came down and received him joyfully. He wanted the Lord. And, and so this was before that, how he went to see him. And that how he turned his life around and he began, became somebody who became an occupier of the land. So the next scripture where we're actually getting started, and that was kind of a preview. I'm going to start in verse 11. I may stop as I'm reading but um, I'm not sure. I got that from somebody else, by the way, also, that says, has said the same thing. Um, it says in Luke chapter 19, starting with verse 11, it says, And as they heard these things, what Jesus had just got through saying, he added and spake a parable, because he was nigh to Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of God would immediately appear. I want to stop there. This tells me why he said this parable at this time. Uh, this was his late, toward the very end of his ministry. In fact, after this, he's going to be going to Jerusalem for the last time. He's going to have his last supper with his disciples. He's going to be uh, welcomed. And then he's going to be betrayed and he's going to be crucified. So this parable, he was trying to get them back in line, back focused on what was actually going to happen. And he said, because they had thought that the kingdom of God was about to happen, they didn't realize at this time that he was about to die. And so, what did he say? He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Who is he referring to? Himself. It says, and he called his ten servants and delivered them Ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Now that's the theme of what I want to speak to you about. But I want to go a few more things before I get into that. Is that, again, it's talking about him and his future of what's about to happen. Because the very next, next verse it says, But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. That's exactly what happened to him. They refused to have him reign over the uh, Sadducees and Pharisees. They set it up uh, to have him to be crucified, wanted him to be crucified. All this, they turned away from him. But what did he say? He's talking about his people, his disciples. It says, we will not have him reign over us. Verse 15, and it says, and it came to pass, and when he was returned, having received his kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money. Now this isn't the focus of it, but I want to stop there and say, that's the same thing that's going to happen. When he does come to get us, we're going to have to stand before God as Christians, and he's going to say, what have you done with what I've given you? 
And what he wants us to do is occupy till he comes. My thought is, well, first of all, what does it mean? So I used the Strong's and I was looking up information, again, Blue Letter Bible, and I'm not going to try to pronounce the Greek word, but it gives you the Greek word. But I want to go over something what Strong's Dictionary says. It says that it means uh, to busy oneself with, to trade, occupy. And if this goes along with what the New American Standard Bible says as far as the, its interpretation of this same scripture. It says, we are to do business. Whose business? We're occupying, as um, I mentioned uh, before, a pastor said it's a military term. So we're to occupy until he comes. We're to go in and do business. Not our business, not what we want, but to do his business. And that's what it means for us to occupy. We're to use what God's given us. And now I want us to look a little bit deeper in what he's saying to us um, uh, on this military. I thought it was interesting to look up, and there were several different versions, and some I thought, well, that's not exactly what it means to what I believe he's saying to us, but there was one that was specifically that did. And some of the things it said for a military term, it said control and possession of hostile territory that enables the invading nation to establish military government against an enemy and or martial law against an insurrection in its own territory. But this is the one that I found that this is from the Army Tactical Mission Task Definitions flashcards. And this one's what spoke to me. And it says, a tactical mission task in which a commander integrates direct and indirect fires, terrain, and obstacles to upset the enemy's transition or tempo, to interrupt his timetable, to cause his forces to commit prematurely or attack in placement um, in the wrong place. So my thought first was that's what the enemy's been doing to us. But what God is calling us to do is to do it back to him. He wants us to occupy. He wants us to be the one that disrupts the enemy, interrupt the enemy, get him out of sync, fluster him. And I got that from my pastor. He wants us. And if we will occupy, that's what we will do. That's what will be happening with us. It says, now, we are in a spiritual battle and not a physical one. I put that down because it's important for us to know. We're not talking about going out and shooting anybody or doing anything to uh, hurt anyone. But this is a spiritual battle. It's one that we need to involve ourselves in. It's not physical. We're to love our enemies. We're, and we're not fighting against flesh or blood. We're fighting against powers and spiritual uh, entities. We are not fighting against people. So I want to make that clear. But when we occupy, we've got to remember, if I'm occupying, that means this isn't my home. In uh, Philippians 3.20, it says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not my home. I'm just passing through. There's a song. And we need to realize that this is in our, our home. This is not where we live. We are to occupy the land. And what does it mean? Or how can we occupy? I've already went over the definition. But how are we to do it? In the military. What you wear matters. In our spiritual warfare what we wear matters also. It's a very important thing in our lives. We've got to put on the full armor of God. That is in Ephesians chapter six. And so it tells us to put on the full armor of God and that we are to put it on, every part of it. And it says, so that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And again, right after that is where it says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And so that's important for us to know. 
it's important for us to sense. Now, also in military troops, they follow orders. Our commander in chief is the Almighty God, the Supreme. There's no one like him. There's no one who can touch him as far as hindering him or hurting him. The devil is powerful, but he can't compare. He can't do anything that will stop someone who is falling after the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can have confidence in who our commander-in-chief is. We must follow the commands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he is also called the Word. And that is important because where do we get our information from? Where do we get our orders from? When he speaks to us, and often it's through his word. There's some things, what do I do? How am I to occupy? First of all, he gave us all the same instruction for all of us. He said, we are all told to go and make disciples. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. We're all to go out and make disciples. That means we're all to go out and speak about Jesus. We're all to tell what he has done for us. We can, our testimony, telling people what God has done for us, that's occupying the territory. That's disrupting the enemy, because when we speak, when we live the life in front of others and we are going out and helping others to know more about Jesus Christ, not only to get them saved, but disciple means to go in and we're going to go and help them grow in the Lord Jesus Christ so they can then make other disciples. When we do that, we are disrupting, we are occupying the territory. We are going in and making a difference. We are disrupting the enemy. Now, that's only for all of us, but what about our different callings? Now, in the military, you have your assignments. Not everybody does the same thing. There's some that clean. There's some that cook. There's some that do battle. There's snipers. There's all different areas that people serve. And they're at different levels, different ranks to be military. As you can tell already, you know that I was never in the military. I want to read through some things. This is from Romans 12. By the way, Romans 12, the chapter, is one of my favorite, if not my favorite chapter in the Bible uh, because I feel it gives us so much about how to live. Romans 12, starting with verse 6. It says, Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, we have gifts that differ. What does that mean? We don't all do the same things. He is calling us to different things. It says, if prophecy according to the proportion of his faith, if service in his serving, or he who teaches in his teaching, or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. I want to pause there. The different areas, and this doesn't list all. There's other scripture, and I may read some of those. I'm not sure. But some of you may be called to prophesy, to preach, to minister. Some of you serving, teaching, exhorting, giving, leading, showing mercy. All those things. We are called to multiple of these things, yes. But not all of us are called in all areas. I want to go on to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 7. It says, But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another 
<laughs> the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. And this one is more even so uh, related to this. 1 Corinthians 12, starting with verse 28. It says, And God is appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, various kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? But he's given each one of us gifts. He's given each one of us callings. And he wants us to walk in those. Again, this is for, he has appointed this to the church for us, for our edification, for our growth. Each one of us need to be seeking God about what he'd have us to do and then walking in it. Now, I want to go hear something I've said many times, and it's uh, to give you hope and me hope too. When you first start doing something, or if you don't do something on a regular basis, sometimes you may not feel that you're doing very good at what you're doing. Just like a baby, when it first uh, grows, it starts to crawl, then it walks, then it becomes a runner, and it grows. It takes exercising the gifts in you in order to grow. And if you have never rode a bicycle, you can't just get on one and ride it normally. You have to try, and you're gonna fall, and you're gonna get up again, and you're gonna fall, and you're gonna keep on, but you're gonna, all of a sudden, something's gonna happen, and you're gonna start riding, and the next thing you know, you're riding all over the place. Now, if you used to ride a bicycle, they say you never forget it, and that's right, you won't, but you do get rusty. And some of us have neglected, as he was speaking to me early on, to occupy the land. And some of us have ne neglected the callings upon us. Some of us have neglected to occupy in general. We've kind of kept our mouths shut, trying to stay away, not to hinder anybody, not to get anybody's attention because we didn't want to be seen. But he is calling us to get back out and to occupy the land. So how are we going to do that? You go in the military, you have basic training. Before you do anything, first you have to be saved. You can't occupy as a Christian if you're not a Christian. You've got to be saved. After you're saved, you've accepted Jesus Christ. It says, study to show yourself to prove, approved. A workman that does not need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of God. Pray and seek his face. Before you do anything, you've got to get into the word. You've got to pray. You've got to seek him. Lord, what would you have me do? How would you have me do? Get filled up on the word. When you fill up on the word, it's going to come, in out, come out. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So as we do those things, he's going to minister. He's going to flow through you. And he's going to tell you what he wants to do. Be patient. Be patient. Now, sometimes after basic training, uh, a lot of times you have to go to specialized training based on what you're going to be doing. And you're going to get more instruction. You're going to have more practice because you're not going to get out in a battlefield and never have held a gun, never shot a gun. You're not going to be out there and be expected to know how to do something. You're going to practice beforehand. And he guides us and he leads us and he teaches us in small things first. And then we grow, then we move, then we flow. So we study, we pray. Then, I've already mentioned, we put on the full armor of God. As we're doing those, we're learning to do and put on that full armor of God. We're going to put on the breastplate. We're going to put on the belt of truth. We're going to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're going to have on the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and then... We're going to take hold of the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, you can't take hold of the Word of God unless you did that first thing I mentioned, study. We've got to study His Word so that we can use it, so that we can do battle. Wherever He places us, whatever assignment He gives us, we can only do it if we obey Him. So to occupy takes some preparation. 
takes preparation to occupy. So sometimes we may not understand uh, why he wants us to do certain things. It may not make sense to you. It may seem inconsequential. You may think it sounds weird, maybe. Obey anyway. If you know it's God telling you to do it. I was talking to uh, another person. I said, the Lord started getting me to obey him. Sometimes it's like, I said, Lord, whatever you say to do, I want to do it. And I'd be like, I'd see a piece of garbage on the ground. It's like, you need to pick that up. I thought, it's not my garbage. Now, I'm not talking about, and I, I found, so I got me something, a Kleenex or something, I forgot what I got, and I'd go pick it up, just keep my hands clean. Then I'd go sanitize my hands, but I would do it. You may think, that's silly. I know, somebody might have saw me going and picking it up, and it might have made it a difference to someone. It's the little things often that makes a huge difference. When you occupy, the things you don't see are the things that people will notice. So it's important that we do those things. Today, again, COVID-19, my back next up, giving somebody a hug. Okay, hugs, I can hug you this way now, but I can't give you a hug. But I can show a smile to you. I can show myself friendly. I can let people know that I care. That's occupying. Again, letting the love of Jesus flow out of you. That is occupying. When he tells you to say something, say it. When he tells you to do something, do it. If he tells you to give something away, give it away. There's been times that, um, again, the Lord will sometimes test us to see if we're willing to. But again, there may have been other purposes to it. I had a necklace, it was a cross necklace. And uh, a young girl, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, I'd love to have that. The Lord said, give it to her. So I said, I took a moment, I'll be honest. And I said, okay, and I gave it to her. Um, it made a difference. After that, she was, she'd come to see me more. She, you know what I mean? She'd come up to me and it opened a door. You might think, it's, it's, again, the small things. It's not the big things always that make the difference. Obeying him, whatever he tells you to do, be willing to do it. Now, let's go over a few things. We need to occupy till he comes. He's gonna come back and uh, I believe it's soon. We need to be ready. But until he comes back, he said, occupy. In the scripture from what I was reading, on down it said, um, I'm not gonna go back and read those, but he gave them each a pound in this scripture it said. And then he went back after being gone a long time, he came back and the first one said, here, I have, Master, I have give, taken my pound and I have gained 10 more. The next one said, I've gained five more. Then one came and said, I knew you were austere. I knew that you did not, uh, you, you were formidable and that I became afraid and I hid what I had. I hid that pound because I didn't want to lose it because if I felt if I lost it, if I didn't do anything with it, at least I'd have it basically. And he said, you said you knew that I went and got where I had not even sowed. I took, you should have at least put it in the bank and had it draw some interest. And he told him, he said, take from him what he has and give to the one who, ha who gained 10. Now, I don't want to be the one who said I didn't use anything God gave me. You don't want to be the one that says, I didn't use anything God gave me. Now, I may be the one who had one, but at least I pray I will gain at least one more. I will do something. I will make use of what God has given me. But it's God that gives the increase. We've got to have faith. We can't be afraid of God in that way. He loves us. He wants us to go out and use. Just like a child, as I mentioned before, when they start to learn to walk, they're going to fall. The parent, and he's God our Father, he wants us to get up and start walking. He wants us to get up and start moving for him. We can't stay in our pew. We can't stay in our home hidden. We've got to speak. We've got to do whatever we believe he tells us to do. And it has to align with his word. So we go back and we have to study. We have to seek him. 
and trust that he will speak. And we says his sheep knows his voice. We will know his voice and we will know he's telling us to do it. We've just got to be able to yield and obey and he will do the rest. So we need to occupy till he returns. If we will do what he tells us to do, again, don't look at the size of it. There will be an impact. We want to see revival. We want to see lives changed. Billy Graham was saved because an usher took the time to find for him to have a place and his friends a place to sit, and he was saved. You may think, that usher didn't do very much. That usher occupied because not only what he did made a difference. His occupation made a difference in thousands, probably millions of lives. So occupying is not the size of what we have or what talents we have or what gifts we have or what callings we have. It's just using what he has given us. Whatever he's placed in my hand, I need to use it and let him do the work and let him do the increase. If we do, we will disrupt and hinder the enemy. We will turn back his plans. Now God uh, is sovereign and nothing happens that he doesn't allow anyway. And he is going to return. What is in the word is going to happen. But what did he tell us that he wanted us to do right before he left? He said, go out and make disciples. He's calling us to occupy. Because if you're making disciples, you are occupying. You are moving and you are doing the work. If you are willing to obey the call that he has called upon you and are called upon your life, you will make a difference. You will influence this world. Yes, the world's going to get worse and worse. But it says at the same time, there also is going to be an end time revival. And we need that revival. But it takes. It's going to, what God said in his word is going to happen no matter what. But I want to be a part of it. And if you want to be a part of it, you've got to get up. You've got to start wherever you're at. And you've got to move to occupy this land that's not our home. So that when he returns, he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter in. That's what we want. And we want others to go with us. And that happens only if we will start to occupy the land. In John chapter 12, verse 26, it says, If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. It's not based on ability. It's based on service, willingness to serve, willingness to listen, willingness to yield, willingness for him to move in our lives. The time is now. There's no time to wait. It's time to occupy. If you're a newly enlisted or if you're a senior that has served the Lord all of your life, you feel like I've done my time, it's time to occupy. One of the things we need that wasn't mentioned in any of this, we need intercessors. We need people who are intercessory praying, praying for others. You may think, I can't do anything. Um, my health is limited. If that's you, you can pray. You can talk to others on the phone, maybe. Whatever you, wherever you're at. You can disciple new enlistees who need some really basic training. And if you're that new enlistee and you haven't been, you said, Lord, I can't do anything. I don't know what I'm doing. You're, you're to be in full-time service. Start studying God's Word, praying. Get a mentor. Get someone who's going to be there for you. And there's plenty of them there. I'm here. Pastor, call the pastor. He will get you with somebody that can mentor you, who can help train you through the Word so that you can occupy and so that you can grow. So no matter where you're at, it's time to occupy. Amen. Well, thank you for joining tonight. I know that you were blessed. And I want to remind you, talking about spiritual warfare, talking about occupying until Jesus comes, I want to remind you that Jesus is coming soon. And we don't know the day or the hour, but we know 
that our redemption is much nearer than when we first believed. Stay on target, church. Stay, stay in love. Don't, don't, uh, don't get distracted by all that's going on in the world. Stay in the word. Stay in prayer. God is uh, he's moving in his people right now. He's, he's turning our hearts toward him. And this is a great time to be alive, although at times it seems very difficult, very heavy. I want to pray for you before we go. And I want to remind you that if you would like to give to South Knoxville Church of God, by all means, feel free to do that. Uh, you can give by going to skcog.com, clicking on the Give button, and uh, you can give from the website there, or you can give by texting SKCOG to the number 77977. Uh, good ground to sow into. And the giving for June was down a little bit. Uh, God's been providing though. And I just want to remind you that uh, your, your gifts and your offerings, your tithe is very important because God is allowing us to reach actually through these videos to every part of the world. God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you tonight, I pray that this word that we have received from Sister Rose, Lord, has been a blessing and an encouragement to many. God, I pray that it would challenge our hearts to come hard after you. I pray, God, that the things that are going on around us would not be distractions, but God, that they would be uh, a reminder of the days that we're in and that we, God, would take up the cross and follow you daily. And not only, not only would we consider ourselves your, your, your followers, but God, that we realize that we are in this end time army and help us to take the ground and to hold it for your kingdom. God, I don't mean in a militant way, I mean in the spirit. God, you've not given us the spirit of fear, but you've given us power, love, and a sound mind. So we, we stand up boldly, God, and we proclaim, we are your church, we are your people, we will do what you have called us to do. God bless you, church. Hang in there. God, God is on your side and we will be victorious and we are being victorious right now. Join us Sunday morning at 1030 and be in prayer for one another. God bless you.